Okay, good evening. I'm trying not to yell because my son is next to me getting tutoring. Um, but my name is Aries Webb Williams. I serve as the 2021-22 Vice President for DFW Alliance of Technology and Women. Prior to this role, I was the Programs Committee Chair for about three years, and I have been a member of ATW for about five years. Um, by day, I work as a software portfolio advisor for Software One, which is a technology and solutions and services provider that also sells software. Um, and I also serve on our company's internal overarching diversity board. Um, I run my own DEI consultancy. I'm a podcast host and a mom of two boys, LJ and Marvin. So that is a little bit about me. Let me tell you a little bit about DFW Alliance of Technology and Women. I saw that we had some people here who this is their first time. Um, we're very glad to have you. However, you got here by a friend or an email or LinkedIn, we're glad to have you. Um, ATW was founded about 20 years ago by some amazing women, some who are here tonight with us um, out of Texas Instruments here in Richardson, Texas. They saw a need for women who to have support system and a network to help them grow their tech careers, gain personal and professional development, um, as well as become active participants in getting more girls to follow suit. So this has evolved over time, but overall, how we execute on that mission and vision is by um, covering all aspects of this journey um, and serving all generations. So we are a non-vital uh, nonprofit organization committed to increasing the number of women in leadership roles as well as more girls in STEM and technology. Um, this is our vision, changing the face of technology with women. That is what we're doing. Um, and our values are inclusive, inspirational, innovative, influential and interconnected. All right, let us, my computer is like taking forever to go to the next slide, so let's do it this way. Hold on, here we go. Let's do it like this. We're gonna click to this next slide here. Come on, next slide, there we are. Thank you to our partners. We cannot do what we do without you. Here are some of our partners that help us serve on this mission every single day through a lot of hard work. All right, next. And if, you're, if you don't see your company's name there, there are <laughs> ways that you can become a part of this as well. So we definitely don't wanna leave anyone out. Okay, here are some of the value exchanges we have with our partners um, contributing to our mission through our Great Minds program. Um, did you know that this was an acronym? I don't think a lot of people know that Great Minds is actually an acronym. It is Girls Reaching for Education About Technology and Moving in New Directions for Success. See, you learned a fun fact tonight. Um, we need more girls in STEM. If we want more women in tech, we need more girls in STEM, right? So that is one of the big impacts that you can have as a partner. Also, creating leaders, speaking at our monthly programs, participating in our annual uh, executive leadership forum, uh, being a company known for diversity. A lot of our members, um, as you'll see tonight, we are partner Capital One. They have recruiters here. If you're looking for work, this is the way that we help companies diversify their talent pipeline. Um, also ways that you can give back through mentoring and education, as well as become a part of the talent network, right? So those are just some ways that you can do that. As I said, if you would like your company to have these type of impacts um, within the community, definitely reach out to us so that you can uh, develop that partnership with ATW. All right, our Women Who Leap program. Propel your career to the next level, activate your passion, purpose, and potential. This is a program that helps women learn how to brand themselves. And they are actually having a program. Look at that, that is Lisa. She is our uh, director of membership and she's gonna actually be leading a workshop called Why Hello. And it is three, actually they're gonna put you through three exercises and you'll develop an authentic and concise introduction based on your personal brand, and you're gonna practice your elevator pitch intros and prepare you for networking and interviewing. So this is gonna be April 29th 
um, from 6 to 7.30. It is virtual, so go ahead to dfwatw.org to register. All right, and then also for our new members, every month, every fourth Friday, um, we have our new members orientation. This one will be April 23rd. Uh, it happens from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. before you get to work, <laughs> uh, before you really get started as a virtual meeting. It's a great place to meet people um, who have newly joined ATW as well as some of our leaders. Some of us pop in and out of those. Um, so you get to meet people, learn more about what we do, how you can get involved. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. That is just the bottom line. There's so much you can get out of being a part of ATW, but you won't be get, a, get it if, you don't, if you're not involved, right? So this is a way that you can figure out what committees that you're passionate about and ways that you would like to be a part of what we're doing. Same th goes for partners, right? So you can also join and learn and meet some folks. We've seen people who have connected through those meetings and have built relationships and mentor relationships even with some of our um, new members. So. Don't miss out on the membership orientation. Okay, so next month, this is our uh, deep tease here tonight. I saw you in here. Uh, our May events, don't miss that. It is called communication, Communicating for Success um, and Using Language to Influence and Build Credibility. That's gonna be good. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we have Holly St. John Peck as well as Deep Deep. Padakanti, um, our own programs director. Uh, Jeannie Anarudan is going to be moderating that. So we're looking forward to that uh, next month. Okay, what we got? I'm trying to be efficient with my time, you know? I don't know if I do a great job, but we'll see. All right, after this is over, we're gonna meet for a virtual networking and social hour. So we get a little bit more time to network and you saw it was a lot of great people here tonight, so do not miss out on that. That's a pretty big part of what we do here at ATW. Um, so make sure you meet us back for that. And also, if you, like I said, if you are looking, um, you can meet some of the recruiters from Capital One tonight. They will be located at table six. It says in capital letters, Capital One. Um, Sarah Noll, um and Malia. I think that's Malia. I don't want to mess up your name, so I'm not even going to do that. Um, so they will be here tonight to talk to you from PAC Capital One. So this will be a great opportunity for you to meet some people if you are currently in transition or you're looking to change. All right, so hold on, let me get my screens together. Okay, I'm going to call Tamara to come up. Let me see, I don't see your name. There you are, let me give you this. You're not a speaker. Let me give you some speaker rights here and have you introduce Hannah for us. Go ahead and turn your camera on. There she is. I don't hear you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm gonna let you go ahead and introduce Hannah and uh, we'll go on with the rest of the program. Thanks, Tamara. Thank you, Iris. Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight, we're going to introduce a new program that we are doing. It's engaging with university students. I understand we're all professionals and we have uh, kids at different ages. So I want to invite all the parents that they are today here and their kids are in the university um, kind of um, age between 18 and 23, let them engage with us, myself, uh, Diana and Andrea. We are three on the uh, special program committee and we are trying to help the student getting the right support they need so that they secure the right job whenever they graduate. And part of that program, we are giving a spotlight for student, which is what I would like to present and introduce Hannah Thria tonight. She's gonna be uh, sharing with us her experience, her degree, and how we can help her. So Hannah, please um, join me. Aris, if you can bring her here. And while she's joining, I can benefit more from the time by saying we have a lot of initiatives working with the universities. So what we are trying to do exactly what we do with professionals, mentoring, 
resume reviews, interview preparation, uh, uh, spo um, um, uh, sponsorship, um, all kind of support that they need. So Hannah, I saw you for a sec. Where did you go? Come back. Okay, so here you are. Yeah. Good evening, Hannah. Good evening. Thank you, Tamara. Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Hannah. I am a grad student at UT Arlington. And currently I am in my graduating semester and I major in computer science. So I'm an international student here and I'm from India and that's where I did my undergrad. Um, during my undergrad, I did an internship in a company called DCIO. Um, it's more like a public sector company. And I did an internship in the IT side of the company. So I worked in a team where we developed an Android application using Java. And there were some great takeaways that I could get from that internship. I think that was my first ever uh, time that I did a real-time project in industry. I got some great um, teamwork experiences, and then I worked for the very first time on Android as well. So that was my pause, and here I am. Uh, like I said, I'm a grad student, and so there's this project that I did recently in my fall semester as part of my one of the uh, courses. So that's called the Volunteer Management System. So we developed a website for that, and yeah, again, I worked in a team for that. And um, so, so this there's this thing called uh, it's mostly international students who often do that. Is that we can become a volunteer if we want, if we don't end up getting a full-time job by the time we graduate. So since we have just like a window of like 90 days before we become out of status in this, in this country, so we can become a volunteer and as well as find some time to get uh, and try out some jobs. And we will be a volunteer under that professor and we will gain some experience and so that we can put that on our profile and just enhance our old resume. So we do that. So we develop a website for that. And so it pretty much markets it manages the whole thing from the application process to if he or she gets selected to become a volunteer, all the tasks and stuff like that. So yeah, so like I said, I myself am a student and looking for some full-time jobs. And I've interviewed with some companies and some uh, two are in progress. Uh, one thing for sure that I can say is that Companies are looking, I feel this is what I feel. I'm sure most of you guys here are professionals. So sometimes you must have faced this in your life. So what I feel personally is that um, I have interviewed with some biggies like Microsoft and Google. I feel that people right now, the hiring is just looking for somebody who can promise and pitch themselves to be good enough so that they can grow with the company in future. Um, and work with the company towards perfection. So I know having said all that, sometimes sometimes getting the right job will, despite no matter what, take a while. So just hang in there, work on ourselves, and things happen at the right time. And like I am at, on this platform at, with DFWATW, so this is my second month here. And I'm really thankful to our church friend of mine, Melissa Seifert, I hope, I think she's here. And I'm really thankful to her that she encouraged me and offered me uh, the membership fee and covered everything to become a part of this great organization where I almost uh, am, am part of it fully. And I met some amazing people here and I'm growing and networking in, on, in this platform with this group. So I'm really happy and grateful for this platform. And yeah, that's it, pretty much. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Oh so yeah, there was my contact Hannah. details. So. Yeah, uh, we have Hannah's contact. Hannah currently will graduate in May and she can start working in June uh with her visa so um, we appreciate the recruiters hannah will also will connect with them later and again our um initiative from the fw atw to engage with the university student that means if your daughters or your sons need the help please connect them with us and we will be there for them thank you Jeannie. i give it back to you dear
Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. I think I met a few of you today. I am the director of programs for ATW. I've been with ATW for about three and a half years. I volunteered um, initially uh, with the committee, with the programs committee, mm -hmm. with ARIES, who was then the chair. And now I am the chair and on the board. I'm also with Texas Instruments, which makes me very proud when ARIES mentioned that this organization was established by uh, as part of TI's effort in the community. So with that, I will go ahead and introduce our moderator today, uh, who will go on and introduce our two speakers. Um, Cheryl Orange uh, is with FedEx. Um, she is the MD Retail Solutions with FedEx. Uh, in her role, uh, she oversees business and financial management, forecasting, internal and expert, uh, external reporting, compliance, culture, agile transformation, customer integration support, and communications for the Retail Solutions Organization. In her over 25 plus year career at FedEx, Cheryl has helped lead organizations to great success within the office and the community. Cheryl is also one of the founding members of the FedEx Express American, African American Committee that helps to educate audiences within FedEx on diversity issues. Outside of her professional duties, Cheryl is dedicated to working in the community, focusing on the homeless, the American Heart Association STEM program and mentoring the next generation of leaders by volunteering through medic various middle and high school programs. Um, so thank you, Cheryl, for being with us. A welcome to you. Uh, please go ahead and turn on your microphone and camera. Well, hello, good evening, everyone. Um, we are so happy um, to have our panelists with us this evening. Um, but before we get into it, I wanna say thank you to Shanti, Aries, and Jeannie, and DFW ATW for uh, inviting me in this role of moderator for today's session. It's truly an honor to be here. We have two wonderful leaders in the technology in industry here. Um, and let's hear a little bit about their background, uh, career journey, as well as their passion for technology. So I'd like to bring up Indu and Paul, and let's get started. Okay, Indu, we'll start with you. Hi, Cheryl. Um, it's great to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this wonderful forum. I remember before COVID happened, I attended some of the ATW meetings, and this is just an awesome, awesome forum. Uh, a little about me, uh, like Cheryl, you said, my name is Indu. I am the CTO of Capital One Auto Refinance Business. I have been in the industry for more than 25 years. Uh, originally from India, uh, but I have lived a better part of my life in United States. Um, I started out as an application developer. Uh, I have always been a learner and an engineer uh, by heart. Uh, moved from uh, one company to another, uh, learned a lot of different uh, business models, uh, worked for multiple companies, uh, finally joined Capital One around 15 years back, and it has just been an incredible journey. Um, I have uh, uh, built applications, web applications, mobile applications, have worked with some uh, awesome, awesome engineering teams, uh, machine learning, uh, cyber, cloud, uh, you name it, I have done it in my life. From the last two years, I'm running the technology organization for a refinance business, and it is an incredible honor for me today to be here and share some of my experiences. So thank you so much for inviting me here. Well, thank you, Indu, for being here. Now let's invite Paul to the stage and hear from him. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Pons. I'm really happy to be part of this session today. Um, this is the first time I'm participating in an, an event like this one, and I'm really uh, glad that I was invited today. A little bit of background on my end. Um, I am the director of a financial services servicing uh, tech organization in Capital One. 
We are in charge of all the communication platforms for uh, the financial services LOB. I'm uh, also, as Lindu mentioned, I've been a developer uh, since the beginning. I've been working on technology for more than 20 years. I was born in Peru. I came here to the US around uh, 15 years ago. I've been working on different roles, leading tech teams, uh, leading uh, infrastructure uh, organizations, working on companies that have been building cloud in infrastructure for enterprises like uh, 10 years ago before Amazon. And then I moved into Verizon and finally landed on Capital One three years ago. Been uh, playing different roles within Capital One those three years, led the marketing analysis team, uh, doing a lot of machine learning integration and, and, and um, later led uh, some of the pieces of the cloud migration for Capital One. And finally, during the last uh, year and a half, I've been on charge of the internal services, uh, communication platforms, including voice, uh, digital communication, emails, and physical correspondence for customers. Very nice. Well, we see that you all have a varied background. And so it's going to be um, a dynamic and interesting conversation today. So let's get to it. Adjusting to a virtual era. I was recently um, on a women in leadership um, virtual conference, and this quote stuck with me. Great leaders engage team members. Great leaders chase new ideas. Great leaders chase the next challenge. As I said, I know that you two are great leaders that now need to engage team members in a different way. Definitely um, have different ideas and changes we now face. But what did your companies have to do differently as it relates to employees when the pandemic occurred in March, 2020? Let's start with um, you, Paul. Okay, sure. So it has been really challenging at the beginning, to be honest. Uh, I recall that the, during March, once the pandemic started, we had to just do a rehearsal internally to see if we need to just work from home, maybe one day or a couple of days per week, how that will play out. And for us, what's really interesting was working really well. We were able to just use all the technologies that we have available, Zoom and, and other tools to just collaborate. But then later at the end, that was not something that was temporary, was permanent. Therefore, all the kind of engagement that we have in, in the company and all the synergy that we have when we have people physically working together, having a whiteboard to just do some brainstorming sessions, those kind of interactions were gone. And we had to just think about how we can just bring things together and just get the same level of productivity. So that was at the beginning really challenging and will require a lot of kind of a reorganization of the time and making sure that we are effectively managing priorities and uh, making sure the team will balance team between sessions on Zoom and time that they will be really working on effectively on projects. All right. Um, Indu, you have anything you want to add to that question? And thank you, Paul. I think in addition to what Paul is saying, uh, I, I agree with um, all that Paul said. Um, look, 2020 was an unprecedented year for everybody. Um, I think when it started, um, none of us thought that it will end up like this. And uh, if I go back and think about um, March last year, or even February for that matter, uh, it was just uh, unfolding like a movie. Uh, I remember that we started out by canceling our international travel, then domestic travel. Um, I remember we were canceling all the conferences. Um, and then I remember that we were actually one of our few first few banks to actually ask people to work from home. And once uh, the evening we made that decision, the next day we had uh, this project at war footing where we were making sure that people were safe in their homes. Uh, they were going back and uh, we didn't have equipment. It is frankly, it is easy for technologists to work from home because we always have laptops but not so much for call center agents. So I remember we were scraping the buildings for extra equipment and uh, we had this project going out 
uh, at war footing to make sure that our associates are safe and they can they have the tools to work from home. Uh, second thing, as Paul mentioned, uh, we actually uh, have gone through a major tech transformation in Capital One. So we already had a lot of tools already available. Uh, the key was how to use those tools to make sure that our team stay engaged. And that was one of the biggest challenge that we had. Um, I remember that we kept all the forums, we kept all the town halls, uh, all hands, we changed them to virtual. We reduced the, uh, the duration. Uh, we uh, continued to engage uh, with our associates uh, virtually, but we learned as we went along with the time. Um, it, it was just a, a huge learning opportunity uh, while the stuff was unfolding in the world. All right, that that's a, that's quite a lot, and and everybody was impacted by the change in the world, and many companies had to do lots of things differently, um, as we have heard. From a FedEx perspective, um, we were in the process of doing, um, I'll say, a slow rollout of Microsoft Teams and Zoom. And we literally had to roll out um, over 100,000 employees within four days um, to, so that everyone could be collaborative. And it was really incredible. Um, we also, as a company, set up um, organization, organizational meetings to share the latest updates and information around what was happening in the world and the company as it related to COVID. Um, and so it was consistent and predictable communications to everybody. And that was really, really helpful. We've heard from our team members. We also had information coming from our corporate office, offices about our overall plans and how we needed everyone to shelter in place because the health of our team members, as you said, Indu, was one of our biggest concerns. But for our team members that were essential, our couriers, our people working in um, the office, FedEx office locations, um, because everyone was at their home, um, laptops, they were shopping as we all have been. You know, we were all at home shopping during our breaks and on lunch, but our essential workers were still out delivering and shipping packages. And so uh, first I'll say thank you for your business, for all that shopping that you all did. Um, but we put precautions in place um, for our essential team members. You know, members had to wear masks and gloves and some package, uh, packages that used to require signatures were no longer needed. Um, our couriers um, had a contactless delivery. Vehicles and stores were sanitized um, more frequently throughout the day. Um, and the final thing from an employee perspective that really blew our minds was uh, the productivity. You know, McKinsey and company um, said, and I quote, productivity has long been a weak spot in global growth, but the crisis might have kickstarted a rise in productivity. And that was definitely the case for our IT organization. For my team specifically in the month of April, shortly after we went into COVID shelter in place, we um, moved an isolated data center into an enterprise shared data center, all virtual, all virtually, and systems were brought up ahead of, ske ahead of schedule, excuse me. And that gave everybody a boost of confidence um, and the rest is history. But oh, we had a lot of different change, um, as did most companies for uh, to deal with COVID. And it just was, it has turned out to be, you know, a blessing from an IT perspective in disguise for our productivity of our team members. So let's flip the script a bit. What have we done differently for our customers? Um, what technical challenges did your company have to overcome in working with customers virtually? So, Indu, since we started with Paul last time, we'll start with you this time. Sure. 
Um, so Paul and I, we both are in auto business and uh, believe it or not, uh, last year, we, had see, we have seen some unprecedented growth in the auto business. Um, thank you for your business. Uh, it appears that people are very interested in buying cars and we have our financing business as well as refinancing business. And we did a multiple, we did multiple things. So first and foremost, we wanted to take care of our existing customers. And uh, I'm sure Paul is going to share more details about it. Uh, we actually um, made available uh, various payment programs for our customers so that we can help them in this hour of need. For our new customers, uh, since we actually uh, uh, partner with a lot of dealers and people were not going to dealerships, we actually work with the dealership to make sure uh, that we are able to um, reach out to our customers on their turf. So we engage with the dealers to start the digital um, uh, digital side of our business. We were already starting it, but we just expedited the whole thing. For our refinancing business, we uh, offer savings to our customers and we wanted to make sure that they can take advantage of the new low um, interest rates that are there in the industry. Uh, so we, uh, although a lot of banks in the industry, they stopped refinancing, we continue to offer our savings proposition to our customers. So all in all, uh, I, I really would like to think that we were able to help uh, people out there with their financing needs. Uh, and I'm really, really proud of what we did in Capital One to help uh, the customers. All right, Paul? Yes, uh, that has been really a challenge in the beginning. Um, as you can imagine during March, um, when we started to have all the pandemic crisis and people uh, start losing jobs and they were have issues to just make the payments for uh, the cars that they bought, and the volume of calls that we got from our customers to, that were hitting our agents' uh, call centers increased by five, uh, in a factor of five. So that was really an, um, an really a huge amount of uh, volume that created a backlog on calls and uh, customers were waiting for an agent to be available for hours. That was really a really bad customer experience. We were not really prepared to just get this amount of kind of um, attention or require requirements to just uh, get a COVID extension for payments. On the bright side, that was, as uh, Indu was mentioning before, was uh, a catalyst for us to just e expedite our digital agenda. And we did two things really quick in, in matter of two weeks. First, what we were able to do is, uh, because we are using Amazon Connect uh, on the cloud kind of call center technology, we were able to just reallocate all our agents that were working in five different countries to work from home in just a matter of a couple of weeks. We were able to just provide the tools and just a computer and internet, and they were able to just take off from home. It doesn't matter if they were in Colombia or the Philippines or Jamaica, we were able to just provide that uh, option so agents won't have to just go to a physical call center so they can continue serve our customers. Also, we implemented callbacks in, uh, quickly, quickly, so customers can just uh, request a callback as soon as an agent is available. With that, we were able to just reduce the immediate pain when customers needed to just interact with us. But what was really amazing was we were able to also identify the need to just provide the tools or the, the, the functionality that the customers were asking through agents through a digital channel. So in two weeks, we were able to just go from the design of an online COVID extension solution to an uh, application that uh, was added to our customer portal and was available to our, uh, all our customers through either a web or a mobile device. So uh, before, if you asked us if uh, we would be able to just create a solution so fast and deliver that in production in a couple of weeks, we would say, no, we will need months or even quarters to just design something like this. But we will uh, the need to just provide that kind of relief to our customers, we were able to just uh, deliver that functionality and that was a great success. Once we launched that functionality, customers immediately started to use that uh, functionality in, in the phones or, uh, web, uh, or the website. The phone calls reduced by 80% and then most of our customers were able to just quickly just uh, uh, make sure that they will 
getting sanction and just they can focus on other aspect of their life instead of just waiting for somebody and, or an agent to be able to just take call. Take the call. That's incredible, Paul. That is really, really incredible. And it looks like um, your company's productivity went through the roof as well. Yes. In a week or so, which we would have given a project plan probably of months. So um, congratulations on that. And if anybody is with Capital One and they need an extension on their loan, you now know that Paul and Indu can help you with that. <laughs> with or, yep. I talked uh, a little bit earlier around how our carriers re couriers responded to, to customers, um, but our salespeople were probably um, most impacted uh, from the change of how we are, were operating in this COVID world. Where before it was how many feet are on the street, talking to customers, having lunch and you know, having FaceTime with customers. Now they had to really rely on technology to build the customer relationship. They had to use Zoom and digital dashboards and leverage our Salesforce.com um, features to add more value to our customers. Um, we also had to be solutionists for our customers, especially on the print side. So uh, no one was going into the store to get copies or make signs for FedEx office. And so we had to be creative. So um, a lot of times when you are looking at sports and you see those paper people that are sitting there, um, a lot of those were printed uh, by FedEx office. So uh, we had to get creative. Um, also, our cold box solution uh, was instrumental in getting the vaccines delivered first in the U.S. and now around the world. So we had to double down on figuring out how to serve our customers more efficiently. Um, and I think, you know, as we said, companies are doing it. They're doing things that they never thought they could do so quickly. And we have just been we have just been figuring things out and and getting over barriers um, as we go. So I know we've talked a lot about um, a lot about some different things thus far. I'd like to take a pause and see Jenny. Are there any questions from the audience so far? Uh, we just had one question, uh, and I think Paul kind of answered it. Uh, maybe you can answer it for uh, FedEx, Cheryl. It was around specific IT solutions that your or technology solutions that you had to put in place in order to deal with uh, with COVID, with the customer interaction on you know, during COVID. So the customer interaction, Salesforce.com would be. Um, one uh, that I kind of stated before um, was was critical um, to our sales teams. And for us, Microsoft Teams has been like a godsend for us because FedEx is a big company. We have over 500,000 employees. And for us to be able to get on the phone or get on Teams and do a PI planning or um, just have uh, an interlock session um, has been, ha, is now easier than it's ever been. Um, so those types of um, solutions have been um, fantastic, fantastic for us. So um, I know Paul talked about it. Um, Indu, you have any technology that your team has uh, or your company has implemented to deal with COVID? Um, Cheryl, I think to be to be very frank about uh, to be very frank, um, we we were lucky. Uh, we have been uh, uh, in this tech transformation journey for multiple years. Um, so we already were on Zoom. We already used Slack. Um, uh, we already used a G Suite, uh, which is very very collaborative, as you probably already know. Um, and uh, our our focus was more on how to take these technologies and uh, make good use of it to make sure that we stay engaged with our teams. 
Uh, but thank God we went through that tech transformation. Uh, I know many companies in the industry are actually trying to get there and they have made huge progress. Uh, but we were really, 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 yeah, really lucky. Yeah. In that I, I, I feel you because FedEx, we were slow rolling, but COVID came and we had to fast roll. Um, so so I, I get you. Well, let's 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 change gears again. So, Indu, I'd like you to take a look in your crystal ball and paint a picture for us of how you think your company will operate with customers and employees post-COVID. Um, Cheryl, I, I, I do think um, that when this event started, um, we all, at least I, I had this feeling that we will go home for a couple of weeks or maybe a couple of months. And when we come back, we will just switch the lights on and everything will be same again. Uh, I think by now we all know that that is not going to happen. Uh, there is going to be a new normal, uh, I think, for associates, for employees, for companies, uh, for uh, people out in the world. Uh, there is just going to be a new normal for everybody. Uh, I, I think that from a uh, people perspective, uh, there are going to be a lot of changes uh, uh, in terms of what their demands are or what their expectations are in terms of work arrangements. Uh, hybrid model is here to stay. Uh, we as companies have to support it. Uh, I think our associates want it. And it has shown that the productivity actually goes higher and is beneficial for our associates. So that is one thing I think is going to stay. Uh, the second thing, I do think that the business models are going to emerge for us in Capital One. Uh, it just expedited our niche need uh, to go to digital, even with our dealerships. So I do think that new business models are going to emerge and companies are just going to have to pivot. Uh, third, um, I do think that the pace of tech transformation is just going to get uh, higher and higher. Um, I, I am very proud to say that we had completed a portion of our tech transformation journey, Cheryl, as you did with uh, FedEx. Yeah. But I think it is just a start. In this decade, we are going to see a lot of new technologies, a um, lot of new processes, a lot of new things in the technology world related to cyber, machine learning, analytics. Uh, innovation is probably going to go through the roof, and it is just going to be good for our we're going to be good for our customers and our associates. I actually feel very very, very nice. positive about this. Very future. good. Your crystal ball is telling you some things. I'm going to have to call you in a couple of weeks to see what it says next. Well, what about your crystal ball? What does it say? Yeah, it's very very aligned with the, what Indu was mentioning about the work arrangement, and this is something that. I feel it's everywhere. Uh, associates, employees that are really appreciating this uh, flexibility to working from home and hybrid model probably is going to be the most common model in the future. And going back to how we are working with our customers, definitely this is an opportunity to just expedite the digital adoption, the, the digital agenda for any company. So a good example is what we have been doing historically. We have been trying to just replace a lot of the physical interactions through agents or manual interaction with customers to just get physical documents to use tools uh, in new applications or ways to just interact directly to customers and get the uh, digital documents, uh, let's say, through a picture or through your phone. This kind of uh, interaction before was not really a big priority, but now it's something that we really need to do. And every time we are building new functionality or we are working in a new area, we need to first think digital and implement probably a digital channel that in a more traditional way to just get a physical document or just having an individual or an agent talking to a customer to just get that information. So uh, all these challenges that we faced during this uh, last, last year or year and a half are going to be at the end positive because they are going to just expedite a lot of changes that without uh, these uh, constraints that we are facing right now may take multiple years and now we are doing things that we didn't think that we were able to just do in so fast all right well um i can't wait to see how your crystal ball predictions come out 
in a couple of months, um, we will we will be seeing some things move a little differently. But I, I will tag on something to this to this particular question. Um, the World Bank forecasts that the global economy will shrink by 5.2 percent this year. And I think when they wrote this, this year was 2020. That decline represents the deepest recession since the Second World War. So you guys in your crystal ball, you're seeing all this wonderfulness and innovation and um, all things kind of in technology, you know, um, moving forward. But Paul, what technologies in your in industry are on a downturn due to the pandemic? And are there any that you think are here to stay? Yeah, I definitely feel that all these uh, tools that we are using for collaboration are, are basically new, the new tool set that we are going to use everywhere. Things like Zoom or any kind of video conference it's not just something that you will do for work. You will do for just uh, engage with friends and even kids for getting tutoring. So the, the level of how ingrained in our lives these new tools, collaboration tools, uh, is going to be it's going to be really strong during the next year. We more and more dependent on these kind of interactions. There are other kind of industries that uh, may may have had like a hard. Uh, time in the future, the ones that will require some kind of physical interaction, like in a good example, call centers, depending on a physical phone, is something that is not something that will be used a lot in the future. I think voice over IP, soft phones, that kind of technology to communicate, create call, virtual concert call centers is, is something that's going to replace the traditional call center and the physical mortar brick kind of buildings that we we are still using some areas. Okay. All right. Hmm, that makes you think a little bit. And do you have any thoughts you want to add to that? Um, Cheryl, I completely agree with Paul. Um, I think um, um, COVID has just given us a taste of what is possible in the uh, in the future. Uh, it has been an unfortunate event for millions of people. My heart goes out to all of them. But from technology perspective, uh, I think it has just uh, opened uh, a whole new dimension. I do think that uh, people will, in general will be uh, embracing the digital ecosystems. I do think that technologies like uh, digital signatures, uh, transcription, uh, digital models, web applications, mobile apps, they are, they are here to stay. And as customers and companies, they move to a digital world, uh, we will probably have even more rules and regulations about data privacy um, and cyber security. And there will be new companies emerging to do analytics on all this data that we are collecting. Um, so I, uh, I do think that, like Paul said, um, uh, all the technologies that are related to physical touch, for example, ATMs uh, um, and other things, they are probably going to win out and uh, digital models are just going to emerge. Um, okay. Well, you guys heard it first here. So um i think we are genius saying questions are coming up in five minutes but there is one burning question that i know that the audience would want to hear about so i'm going to ask it so give me a point of privilege Jeannie. Uh, give me a few minutes so i'd like to ask a general leadership question since we're having this fireside chat and i know we're talking about technology but you guys are leaders in your industry so as leaders, our team members, we want our team members to be engaged, have a positive attitude, ask questions, add value. And as leaders, our team members want us to have vision, compassion, be change agents, and so on. So our world has changed. And so as a leader, how have you pivoted or evolved your leadership style in this past year? Andrew, let's start with you. Sure. 
Um, so uh, for me, I think um, I have uh, pivoted in two ways. So number one, um, I have pivoted to figure out ways to protect what we had. So when we were in campus and we worked together physically with our teams, um, we had an awesome culture. We had fun together. We innovated together. We were building business capabilities and our business was booming. Um, uh, in this new virtual world, uh, it is very important for me to make sure that we protect what we had. And we have employed different things. Uh, we have virtual forums. We have a virtual happy hours. We play games together. Uh, we have lunch together. Uh, we can't like have literally lunch together, but we issue Grubhubs or Uber Eats coupons. And then uh, we all meet together. And then we just order lunch and have it together. Um, so that has been uh, uh, very, very important to me to figure out how do we protect what we already have. The second uh, uh, challenge or the second pivot that I have made uh, is about how do we uh, take advantage of what is there to come? Uh, how do we uh, cater to the new expectations that our customers are going to have, our associates are going to have, our customers are going to expect us to be present more digitally. Our associates are probably going to uh, expect us to provide hybrid models of working. Many other companies are doing that. So how do we adjust to these changing demands? That has been one of my um, uh, goal. And I have thought of different ways we are trying. I, I would be honest that we don't know the answers right now, but that is something that we have been working on. Paul, anything for you on this one? Yes, um, I agree with uh, Indu in, in, uh, regarding we need to protect our teams. We need to protect our, our associates. So Capital One has this incredible culture about people first. We need to just make sure that we are taking care of associates in all aspects. Also making sure that we provide development plans and we support them during these very uh, difficult times. I believe that what we lost at the beginning of the pandemic was the, the capacity to connect with individuals. So I recall Fridays, I, I went earlier to the office and we had breakfast and we sit, I, I sat down with a couple of associates and I spent have an hour talking, just talking, not specifically about work, but just, just creating that rip on just having that connection with my team. We completely lost that capacity once uh, COVID started. Everything was Zoom. Zoom meetings every hour without time to just really connect with people. We had to just change our mindset and just make sure that we had enough time to just really get back that amount of time to just really stop working and just have more time to just really engage with your team so for example what i'm doing is every thursday i have a breakfast with one of my different teams we spend 45 minutes just having breakfast and talking talking about everything but work we're not talking about work i'm not about talking about projects and uh, having uh, again games having uh cahoots or different kind of uh, virtual uh, escape rooms at the end, it's really interesting that you were able to just still connect with your teams and still feel that they, you know what's going on, that they feel that they know where we are going, which are the goals for our organization, and still deliver everything on time. But most importantly, they are not going to overcommit and work more hours than expected. Because that's one of the major concerns that we have at the beginning of last year. Because people was working at home and they were working you know, eight hours, nine hours, more, more time than, this, than was expected. So the other piece that was really important for me was to be very careful about timing and also demonstrate that uh, we should stop working at a specific point of time during the day. No more emails, no more meetings, be respectful about lunchtime, be respectful about breaks, uh, starting maybe meetings not exactly at the hour, but five minutes later and ending five minutes before so people can just take a break, walk, just take a bike break, grab something to eat. So those those small elements are really really important. So that's that's one of the multiple things that we try to do in Well, that's great. I think um, in our department, we still have a problem with uh, coveting the lunch hour. <laughs> so we are still working on that. But personally, since sheltering in place, I have been able to strategize a little bit more and share more of my vision with with the team. You know, FedEx has a people first culture also. 
And one of our goals is to protect our culture. So we're having more town halls with the teams and sharing company and department and COVID information, as well as highlighting different um, projects that are going on. Um, we created a new um, reward system and we call it the purple star, the um, gold star, and then our coveted award across the corporation is the five star. But for the purple star, you know, we have uh, put on people's calendar a 30 minute um, session. And when they come on, there's music going, and it's happy music, and we um, reward those team members that have been submitted. And we then um, go on, go on about our day. But when the feedback that we got was, you know, that was a great break in the day. It was so much fun. So we're trying to do things to keep the team more engaged. We've had scavenger hunt, cahoots, baking contests, virtual baking contests, which was a lot of fun. Uh, you can only have three ingredients. Anything over three ingredients is too many. But, you know, they had to do research to find a three ingredient cookie. And so that was fun. Um, finally, I, I tried to impress upon everyone to take their vacation time. You know, we get burned out working all day, every day um, here. And so get out an email. Don't check your email while you're on vacation. You know, I have a hard time doing that, but I do try to cast a shadow so that others will see that, you know, they need to take this time and and release and, and you know, just get away so that they can come back energized. So Jeannie, thank you for um, giving me that time. I'm gonna turn it over to you for uh, any additional questions uh, that we may have in the chat and close us out. All right, so we have two minutes left. We have the ticker going, if all of you can see that at the top of the screen. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead, and there were a couple of questions uh, that came up. Uh, one was um, from Shoba, a lot of models on cost uh, to serve specifically in the field of auto finance are, build, are built on years mm -hmm. of historical mm -hmm. data. Did you think it's required for you to redo these models based on customer behavior during COVID? And either of you can take that question, Paul or Indy. Okay. Uh, I can take that question. Uh, I used to run the M&A organization, the one that was accountable for all these models that we use for assess and approve loans. Uh, historically, we have been always doing a retrain every every year. Uh, our goal is doing this every every three months or every quarter. So there will be a process to just consume that information. But the, with all the technology that we have right now, this is not really one time. It's more like an uh, increasing the pace that we are doing to retrain the models and make sure that we have enough information and up to date information regarding how to process uh, appropriate the, each the loan application. So it's just increasing that, that the pace that is going to just help us handle correctly this, this new requirement, this new work. All right. Very good. And I think we are at one minute, so I'm going to ask one question, Indu, of you. Um, how have you had to adapt personally to these changes in the last year? Um, <clears throat> look, I have been working uh, for more than 25 years. All my life, I have worked. And I have two boys, and before COVID happened, me and my husband, um, we were empty nesters. Uh, when COVID happened, my kids came back, and I will be honest, um, it, it was um, sort of a blessing in disguise. And they came back home. We had lunches together, dinners together, and my heart has never been fuller. Uh, on the other hand, I'm conflicted because millions of people have been impacted. And my heart goes out to all the people, uh, like single parents working, uh, two job families, uh, kids uh, studying at uh, home, and uh, uh, people who just came out of college and then working on a new job, but don't even get an opportunity to meet their teams. Um, I can totally, totally see how it has been hard for all the people out in the world. Um, so I, I have been conflicted. I personally have been blessed, I would say. 
Uh, but my heart goes out to all. I completely understand. Family. Thank you very much. Uh, Indu, Paul, and Cheryl today for a great, great session. Very insightful. We talk technology. We talk personal uh, aspects. We talk people. We talk employees, customers. Uh, it was great in diff two different industries altogether. So uh, it was awesome for, for me to hear so many of the similarities as well as the differences across the board. I thank you very much. Uh, I'll be sending you a gift uh, in the next couple of days as a token of DFW ATW's appreciation. Thank you again. I have so enjoyed working with you on this session. And with that, I will hand it back to Aries. Aries, you're on. You can go ahead and turn off your cameras and mics. Thank you, guys. Thank you for inviting us. All right. It looks like I'm back on. All right, that was so good. And I related to everything you all were talking about, especially in my industry, that's what we were doing, helping companies get digitally transformed very quickly. Um, the ones that were not ready before it all went down and um, had to get ready. So that was that was a part of my, that's been a part of my everyday life, as well as being a mom with two kids that are um, homeschooled. So thank you so much everyone for joining our April monthly meeting. Adjusting to a virtual era with Cheryl Orange FedEx, Indu Jane, and Paul Ponce Portugal of Capital One. Um, as always, thank you to our partners. Again, we cannot do what we do without you. Um, make sure that you join us next month uh, for our May 13th. Every All of our meetings are the second Thursday of the month. So that one is entitled Communicating for Success with Jeannie uh, Anarudan again as our moderator and our panelists, Holly St. John Peck. Uh, speaker and coach with Peck Training Group, and Deepti Padakansi, Director of Business Transformation at Ericsson. Okay, now, first, make sure you register for that, dfwatw.org, to get your registration. Now, a couple announcements. We're going to be going over to networking again for the rest of the evening. Um, don't forget, Table 6, Meet the Recruiter, Capital One. Also, um, the professional development survey. So once I close this all down and we get back to the tables, you can still get back to the general chat and see that link. So make sure to fill that out so that we can make sure that the programs that we're creating are ones customized for you as our member. Can't wait to see you next time. I'll see you all over at the networking. Bye-bye. <laughs>